just going to talk about creative funding for infrastructure in Africa. The example of the railway sector in Ghana, and we've just been told by him about the infrastructure gap. And really what you're talking about is how we can fill this infrastructure gap, because we can't borrow. We can't just borrow that amount of money as a country, as a, as a continent, to fund our infrastructure gap. So we must look for money. We must look for innovative ways of funding our infrastructure gap. Or we must raise our hands up and say we failed, but we are not prepared to do that. The story of the railway in Ghana starts in 1898. And it starts in 1898 when the British brought the railway to the coast of Ghana. They brought the railway to the western region, to Sekandi, precisely because of gold. They wanted to go up and pick the gold and export it. And in those days, they didn't even watch the gold in, in, in the Gold Coast. They carried the debt and everything and watched it in the UK. But what happened also was that Coco had come into the Gold Coast then in 1876. It came to the eastern part of the Gold Coast, but by 1898, it started moving to the western part of the Gold Coast. Now, we're told this morning of a gentleman who exported cocoa to UK in 1915. And I tell you that the reason why he could export cocoa was because of the railway. Because there's evidence that what happened between 1898, when they started the railway, and 1930, was that Ghana, or the then Gold Coast, became the richest British colony in Africa. And it became the richest British colony in Africa because of cocoa. And it became the world's largest producer of cocoa. And it was all because the peasant farmer saw the train going by and decided to increase his production. And it wasn't because of superior agricultural methods. And I'm happy that agricultural minister is not here, so I can say it. <laughs> it was just because of transportation. And even the British who started, they started it because of gold. But it didn't end with gold, it transferred itself to cocoa. And you can Google and you see research that tells you that. And so why I like this story is that it tells you that all the kind of things that we've talked about today, that Greek minister, this minister, that minister, if we have transportation, if we're able to move goods and people from place to place, it will transform our economy. And in 2020, 2013, a master plan was done. The master plan was done by the previous government, by a previous minister. And Mr. Fosu Dorte, I worked with him together in the same law firm, and I disagree with that statement he made, and I have to make the point. Sorry, I'm a lawyer. If I disagree with you, I'll tell you. Because we haven't stopped using the 2013 master plan, and it's gone through several ministers. And it's about building strong institutions. And when you build strong institutions, it survives governments, and it survives ministers. And the kind of people we are working to, to, with today, some of them came into this country in President Kufour's time in 2008. They worked throughout the NDC period of eight years with different ministers, and they are still working with me. And I hope they'll continue working in the sector after I've left. But now you have the Railway Master Plan of 2013. When you look at the Master Plan, everything you see in red below Kumasi is what existed at the time the British left in 1957. When we became independent as a nation, we had 947 kilometers of railway. By 2017, it was only about 100 kilometers left. 58 existed in the western region where it originally started, and it was used mainly to carry manganese from a manganese mine, which is 58 kilometers away from Takwadi to the port. The number of incidents, and the railway people will call it incidents because they don't want to call it derailments. The number of incidents in 2017 was 700. I mean, if a year is 375 and you have 700 incidents, then it's almost two a day. <laughs> but it didn't make the news because the thing that was getting derailed was F, manganese. So when the train falls down, they pick it up again and <laughs> put the manganese in, and then continue going. And of course, at that time, um, I thank God that I was minister then, so we just were hobbling along. We also had a passenger service, which was going from Accra, the main city, to Saom, and also going from Accra to Achimota. The day that the press went to the passenger service, 
by some divine providence of God, I also had people from my office in the same passenger service to his home. I was told by 12 o'clock by the technical people that I should close it down. We should close it down because it's a death trap. By 5 o'clock, it was on the news that it was a death trap. And they called me and said, well, I've closed it down. I didn't say I closed it down four hours ago. But that's what we had. And by October, the Akratama line also, the train had derailed and everything had come to a standstill. Now, here we had a situation where we had a president who said he was in a hurry, who had set up, this is the first time we've had a railway ministry, and we wanted to build 4,000 kilometers of railway. 4,000 kilometers against a fiscal responsibility act which says that you can only have a deficit of 5%. And even if you calculate it at $5 million per kilometer, and at some places it's more than that, you are talking about $20 billion and above. And so there was no way you can just borrow to build the railway line. We have an eastern line. And the eastern line, the eastern line runs from Accra to Kumasi. Accra is the capital, Kumasi is the second largest city. Arguably, between Accra and Kumasi, it's about two-fifths of Ghana stays there. That is the busiest passenger um, corridor. But in addition to that, we also have an inland port in Bonkra, a few miles away from Kumasi, and now we also have some bauxite in a place called Chebi, near Chebi, where the president comes from. Now, the good thing about that line is that it is an example of creative financing. Because what we did was that we engaged by Swatterhouse and a few other consultants to see whether we could give out that line on a BOT basis. When I became railway minister, everybody told me everywhere in the world that it won't happen. After a while, I was wondering whether, I mean, I, when I looked at the figures and I looked at it, I thought it could happen, but everybody was telling me it couldn't happen. There was a financial viability gap. How we solved that was our government agreed to take 30% equity in it. So we didn't scupper the whole deal of having a BOT, but what we did was that we, took, we have agreed to take 30% of the equity in the project, which then bridges the financial the, the gap. I tell you something, 45 people started off, about 100 people first showed interest. When we started the processes for procurement, it started with 45 people, we came to around 12, then we ended with five. We chose a strategic partner. Two others of the five um, say that they should have been chosen instead. Listen, I'm just a simple lawyer. If, I, if we take a decision and you disagree with me, I'll, there's nothing to be annoyed about. So there's a process in Ghana where if you disagree with the decision of procurement, you can appeal for arbitrary review with the procurement authority. They, 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 that is where it is now. But what it tells me is that it is possible to do a railway network in Africa on BOT. And it's being done on the Eastern Railway Line. The Western Railway Line, arguably, today is our richest line. We have the boss of the Ghana, the man who is changing our bauxite and aluminum sector. It's about 300 kilometers, and he tells us that by 2021, we should be start moving bauxite to the ports. I mean, if we don't do the railway, the Western Railway Line, what will happen is that it will be like the end of the world. The number of trucks that will be taking aluminum down to the ports through Sekendi Takwadi will virtually bring Sekendi Takwadi to a standstill. You won't send your kid to school because he may be put down by one of these aluminum trucks. What we've done is that government has borrowed to fund some bit of the Western Line. 300 kilometers, we borrowed to fund about 100 kilometers of it. The other 200 kilometers, we are going to use creative funding. You can talk to me. I'm still open to listening to ideas, and we'll be here in the afternoon, and we can talk to you. But what you have is that by next year, you have an off-ticket agreement, which can guarantee for you the amount of freight that you can use to pay for the line if you lend to that project. You can be part of an SPV. I'm not giving you one. There's not one answer to the problem, but we can create a situation, a vehicle, where the funding will not come from government, and government does not necessarily have to guarantee the funding. This is what we've done so far on the Western Railway Line, and we, are, we started the construction on the Western Railway Line. It's an asphaltic formation, a standard gauge. 
It's not a speed train, it's 160 kilometers per hour. We have this 350 um, meter viaduct that we're doing. The reason why we are doing the viaduct is that now we have a straighter line. The British, we didn't have a road, so they went to every little village. But we are going 160 kilometers per hour, so we have, must have a straighter line. So we are passing through uh, places that are friendly to, 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 to a railway. Now, what we are doing also is that we are going to Burkina Faso. The president, when he came, said, I want to get to Paga. We took a trip to Burkina Faso. The Burkina president said, don't end in Paga, come to Ouagadougou. We checked with the finance, financiers and people interested in the project, and it changes or it improves the financial viability of, 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 of the project by leaps and bounds. We've been told this morning that we are putting money into a new, a new harbor. Well, you have to have a throughput through the harbor. And the good thing about this is that Burkina Faso seems to have agreed that they prefer a harbor to the other harbor ports around us, the Togo port as well as the uh, Cote d'Ivoire port. And don't forget that they are French speaking. And the two, all the countries around us are French speaking, but they've chosen our country. And so we started what we call the Ghana Burkina uh, Railway Interconnectivity Project. Creative financing, what have we done? Government is taking care of the first 99 kilometers. We got a loan from the Indian Exit Bank, and what is left for us to get into Burkina is about 700 kilometers. That 700 kilometers will go by an iron ore mine. If you look in your books, if your, your, your brochures, it will tell you how much iron ore we have. I think we have about 150 million tons of, of, of iron ore. You can't move iron ore if you don't have a train line. And so that alone guarantees us the opportunity to do creative financing on that line. This is the, the line to Burkina, and we started already laying the tracks, but this is a first class modern railway, and we are building it all the way to Burkina Faso. Now, out of our 4,000 kilometers of railway line, I can tell you with confidence that about half of it we are going to build through creative financing, using the railway line itself, using the intended freight off taker agreement, and also using associated infrastructure around the railway network. If you go to Hong Kong, for example, their metro, money doesn't come from the metro, but 90% of the money comes from real estate around it. And, and, and what, that is what we are seeking to do. Everywhere the railway line goes, there will be development. And we are going to use that development, what we call the railway economic zones, to build the railway. I, I am convinced beyond reasonable doubt that there's a possibility of using creative financing to complete this railway line. In 2013, the master plan said we'll finish the railway network in 33 years. After three years, from 2017 to, 20, to today, a new master plan will come out this year. And that master plan says we'll finish the railway network within 15 years. It is all because of creative financing. We are told that there are limitless opportunities in Ghana. My view is that the sector in which there are limitless opportunities is the railway sector. Thank you very much.